Rebels! Welcome back to Dial a Friend, where we answer big questions from girls like you. I'm Kehlani Jules, and this is the third and final episode in our AI series. We've covered how AI works and how to use it safely, and now we're going to talk about how to use it creatively. We asked kids from Black Girls Code Summer Camp to send us their most pressing AI questions, and we have some really excellent ones to share with you. We have Sarah Fryer here with us as our AI expert today. Sarah is the Chief Financial Officer of OpenAI, the company that makes ChatGPT. Hi, Sarah. Our first question is from Shivani in the San Francisco Bay Area. She wants to know, can you program or teach AI to feel and have emotions? Yes. You know, Shivani, that's a very kind of deep question, very profound. AI can definitely sound emotional, but it doesn't feel like humans do. Um, I have a name for my AI. I call, actually, I don't know why I chose Guy. I'm going to need to change this, but I call him Finn, after Finn McCool, who was a giant in Irish folklore. I grew up in Northern Ireland. I know all about it. And as I've gotten, you know, it's got more time with Finn, I definitely start to feel like I personify Finn and think of it more and more human-like. But it's definitely today mimicking emotions based on language patterns. It's not actually because it's feeling it. So, you know, sometimes ChatGPT will say, I'm so happy to help. And it actually sounds really happy, but it's not actually happy. It's just learning to say it in the way it's been trained for when people sound happy. So no emotions yet. Okay, Whew. I've been wondering about that one too. AI definitely doesn't have feelings. It's just good at sounding like it does. Olivia from Detroit has another really good question. She asks, how can I use AI to help with my schoolwork and daily tasks while still making sure I'm doing my own work and learning? Thank you, Olivia, because I think this is on the minds of, I'm glad it's on your mind. It's definitely on the minds, I think, of all your parents, teachers, all the people that want to make sure that you as girls grow up to be all of the awesome things you're going to grow up to be. So you do need to be 13 to start using some AI pro products like ChatGPT. Once you're 13, with your parents' permission, you're old enough to use ChatGPT, you can definitely start experimenting. I like to think about it more as a study buddy or a tutor personalized just for you. So AI can help explain things, you can check your grammar, brainstorms ideas, or quiz you. My daughter was the queen of little kind of quiz cards back in the day, and now AI can do, her, do that for her in seconds. We even have something called a new study mode that is a great tool to use to make sure you're learning not just getting answers. It helps you break down questions, go through homework problem sets, step by step. So very much like a tutor, not as something that's doing the learning for you. Um, in the end, you're really only cheating yourself. I know your teachers say this to you, parents, we say it to our kids, but you're cheating yourself if you're not in learning mode. But I do think it can really accelerate learning. So I want you to use it in a super curious way in a way that kind of keeps driving you to know more, to be smarter, to learn more things about other cultures and people and so on. Um, and don't let it just be a crutch that stops your learning because that's just a really bad outcome on so many fronts. Yeah, that's a really great point. I love those ideas for studying and homework help. Okay, now we're going to talk about using AI for things outside of schoolwork. Abby Marie from Detroit wants to know, how is AI being used to help people with health issues and how could it make a bigger impact in the future? Yeah, we at OpenAI are really excited about many things that we think AGI will bring or AI, but ultimately artificial general intelligence for the benefit of humanity. There are just all these places where we think there's gonna be massive breakthroughs. So AI is helping doctors in ways like sending you notes after you visit much faster and even helping to talk to patients in many languages. I will let you in on a little secret. So my brother is a doctor, and the type of doctoring he does is emergency room doctoring. So if something happens to you and you're rushed in the hospital, he is the person you often will meet if you show up in his hospital. And so one of the things we've talked a lot about as brother and sister is he almost needs to have this encyclopedic knowledge of every disease and possibility in the world, which of course, even he, while he's amazing, would say he doesn't have all of that. And so this is a place where AI could be really useful over the long run because it could spot things that he might not be expecting. But just like we talked about before, 
We need to make sure that AI is giving us good direction, but that we're also not forgetting to use our brains. I personally am really excited by breakthroughs. Like we at OpenAI think about um, ChatGPT and the models that we're building as over time potentially helping do crazy um, things in the world, like helping cure cancers, helping cure diseases that people had no idea how to even begin to diagnose, how to frame, and then ultimately how to treat. And so that's a big part of what drives us every day right here in, in OpenAI. Wow, I hadn't even thought about those possibilities before. If AI could help cure diseases, maybe it could help with other problems too. Etta from Oakland sent in a question about this. She asked, how can AI be used to help solve real world problems like traffic, social issues, and climate change? Etta, um, a great question as well. Um, AI looks at huge piles of information, find patterns, and suggest smart ideas. For traffic, um, I love that idea. It could help design roads, it might help present, prevent accidents. We have one particular customer here who's used it. Um, we have a lot of people who drive around delivering things. And with that has created a map for that company that really works specifically for people who are using mopeds to get their work done um, to do deliveries. So it tells them things like the lanes are about to merge up ahead or there's going to be a traffic stop. Um, so it really helps them drive safely. Uh, for climate, um, and of course, very top of mind, given that we're seeing all sorts of really horrific climate outcomes at the moment, it could certainly help predict storms, um, maybe help us all use less energy so that we can think about things like climate change. Um, but yes, there is a, a lot of ground to cover here. And the great thing about you, Etta, I think you're 14, is you are just cresting into what you're gonna get excited about to do as you learn through school and then maybe as a career. And I think you're gonna be using amazing tools that maybe makes you the person that will solve some of these big problems. I love that, Sarah. It's so exciting to think about how we'll be using these tools in our lives and future jobs. Do you have any advice for kids that might be thinking about a career working with AI? My advice is, is the same advice I give to everyone in their career. Number one, be curious. Like, don't let people tell you not to ask a question. Don't be shy. Stick your hand up. Go ask the person. Worst case, they ignore you or say no. And I will tell you in 99% of cases, people will want to talk to you and want to kind of help you with your question. So be super curious. Second piece of advice is work hard. I do not know a single successful person who's changing the world who isn't working incredibly hard. So dig deep, um, do well in school, um, and make sure that you're getting your work done, even if it is with AI. And then I think the third thing for me is part of curious and hard work is go to the places where you see this opportunity unfolding. Teach yourself how to use these new tools. Be curious, work hard, but also orient yourself as where the future is going. Um, and I think you're gonna have an incredible life ahead um, with all of this technology right by your side. Be curious, work hard and chase opportunities. That's such good advice. We've learned so many great tips and tricks throughout this series. A big thank you to Black Girls Code and all the girls who sent in questions and are thinking about how to use AI today and long into the future. That's it for Dial a Friend with Sarah Fryer and me. Be sure to check out the Rebel Girls YouTube channel for more stories and advice. Thanks so much for being here, Sarah. Thanks, Caroline. That was amazing. You're amazing. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening, listening and, and stay, stay Rebel. Rebel.